and, and uh, the committee for this opportunity uh, to speak. My name is uh, Angus Crane, and I'm Executive Vice President and General Counsel for the North American Insulation Manufacturers Association, and we are the association that represents all the manufacturers in North America of fiberglass and mineral wool insulation. And we have uh, found that uh, we have uh, four companies who uh, operate in California, and the experience of our companies is that it is already very difficult to manufacture in this state because of the regulatory environment. And there is a concern on the part of all of my members that uh, the cap and trade program may be uh, the program that will actually tip the balance and uh, uh, force them to make decisions that uh, they would uh, rather not make. NEMA uh, members uh, provide probably easily over a, a thousand jobs in California, uh, over a hundred uh, million dollars in annual revenues. We also are a very big user of recycled glass. Uh, fiberglass insulation is the second largest user of uh, recycled collet or glass uh, uh, in the United States. Uh, Owens Corning has a facility in Santa Clara. Uh, Johns Manville has a manufacturing facility in Willows, California. Certainty Corporation has a facility in Chowchilla, California. And Knopf Insulation has a uh, facility in Shasta Lake. So in addition to providing uh, many jobs, direct and indirect uh, benefits to the economy and a user of recycled uh, glass, the use of fiberglass insulation products help to reduce the very pollutants that CARB is trying to reduce, greenhouse gases. And in fact, CARB has recognized that insulation is the most cost-effective tool to actually reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions from uh, the built environment or uh, residential and commercial buildings. And uh, it's cost effective and it's, uh, so there's something counterintuitive making it difficult for us to uh, produce uh, the insulation product that will actually help reduce greenhouse gases uh, in California. I think the other thing that's very important to recognize is that uh, if uh, we were unable to do business in California, we would still be able to supply the market uh, with the fiberglass insulation because of the number of plants we have in the United States. Uh, when they came uh, to uh, assign allowances, you know, fiberglass is the third sector of the glass industry. They afforded the other two sectors of the glass industry, which would be the uh, glass packaging and the flat glass, 100% allowances for all three phases. Fiberglass was given 100% for the first phase, uh, second phase 75% and 50%. When we were, uh, we asked them why they had differentiated us and they said because there is not a uh, threat of foreign competitors coming in and taking over the market. We made the argument and I do believe that CARB has listened and they are going to continue to analyze this, but if, if you would uh, look at this map of our uh, plants that are uh, operating uh, in the Uni United States or North America, you'll see that if California is genuinely concerned about leakage, they need to be more concerned about the two plants that we have at your border in Arizona, two plants in uh, Utah, and four plants in Western Canada that would have a greater leakage threat than anything that would be happening uh, uh, overseas. Also, if you look at that uh, map, you can see that we have the potential in the middle of the country and in the eastern part of the country to take care of any kind of uh, closures or uh, reduction in production uh, at uh, other facilities. We have uh, the capacity to supply the market if we are not able to operate uh, in California. And so what we're asking CARB to do is to recognize that in looking at leakage, they need to take just as seriously uh, the threat from domestic uh, plants or domestic markets because we're able to, uh, to do this. The other thing that I want to emphasize is that, uh, as many people have uh, indicated, the fiberglass manufacturing plants in California are the best performing, meaning they have the top of the line pollution control equipment. There's nowhere we can go with that. We can't reduce our pollutants by improving our pollution control equipment. And so in order to uh, uh, stay in business and continue to operate, we would either have to have uh, the allowances or we would have to have uh, a reduction in uh, uh, production so that we were below the, the, the trigger. Uh, so this is what we're uh, asking uh, from CARB and we are grateful that they are continuing to have dialogue with us and uh, talk with us. Again, our concern is, is the dialogue is not going to take place until January of 2013. 
And so in the end, uh, NAMA's members uh, must compete and survive to provide the jobs and economic benefits that they provide to California. And that the cap and trade has the potential, the cap and trade program has the potential to impose such great burdens that plants cannot compete and survive. And that uh, we just would ask that California consider that if they're going to continue to go down this road, that it recognize uh, that there needs to be significant mitigation of uh, the impact that these programs are going to have on uh, our four uh, facilities in order to be able to, uh, to survive and continue to provide the benefits to the citizens of California and to the uh, economy of California. And again, I thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. I, th I think, you know, all of you have expressed something that I'm not sure was necessarily oblivious to the people at CARB, which is one of your options is to reduce the output of your facility and simply increase the cost of the product that you sell to the consumer. I, don't, I mean, that level of economics I think they miss. I think, th as I understood him described leakage, I did not take him to mean that he was simply looking at foreign, but I thought he was looking at other state as as, as well. I mean, maybe I'm. Yeah, but when, when we met with them, uh, we we felt that we were singled out and asked them the question, uh, why didn't we get the 100% for all three? And they said, because we didn't have data on, uh, uh, you know, the, the foreign uh, markets are not a threat. Uh, and the argument again we made was, Arizona and Utah are far more relevant threats because they're right at your border. And so they indicated that they would try to consider uh, uh, domestic, but at this point, the reason we don't have 100% allowances is because they did not consider the domestic markets. Yeah, that's scary. Now, in the case, in, in, the, in the food producers, Ms. Schulman, if, if you've estimated you've got about a $2 million cost, does that... Um, is that a cost that you can pass on? Well, we can always try to raise the price of our products. The question is, do our customers then go buy from somebody, somebody who else. can offer them for less? Yeah. About what percentage of, would be $2 million of your, of, of your company's uh, revenue? Well, um, if you're strictly looking at the tomato plant, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's uh, probably, as of our revenue, it's, it's hard to say what that is. I think the important point is that the market for canned tomatoes and tomato paste is a, a national and global market, and uh, pennies and dimes make a big difference. And the one and a half to two million dollar estimate is based on, um, you know, the minimum floors put in by CARB at the $10 and then uh, the inflationary 5% factor. And so that doesn't take into account, uh, you know, what the costs are of the allowances if they're higher than that, nor does it take into account the increased cost of electricity and natural gas that we will be uh, experiencing because as those industries are put under the program and then the transportation fuels in 2015. So, you know, the costs are really going to be much higher than that, we believe. And a similar thing, I guess, with your cost with the turbine, as I understood, when you're running the turbine as a test, that's when you have the greatest emission capacity? Correct. We're just really using that energy to complete the transaction with our customer. So if we cannot do that test, we cannot complete the transaction. So the, the manufacturer of the system itself is not a great carbon producer for you? Yeah, we don't use a lot of energy to actually build our, our turbine.